Welcome in, Wednesday edition, Oxford Exxon Podcast, Blue Sky Podcast, still working out a few of the details there, but either way, we are uh, in the Clark Ford studio here with you this morning. We will uh, talk about Caden Proctor, who's quickly becoming one of the most hated people in the state of Iowa over the course of uh, several years. Ole Miss Baseball knocks off USM last night, 8-3 to three there at Trustmark Park in Pearl, and uh, much more today. Clemson suing folks. Suing the ACC, got more court cases, got a a final amount of money going to all the conferences over the college football playoff contract as it uh, has been finalized. All that and more, but first tell you about a a grand opening going on for uh, what they're calling the Blue Sky Epicenter down in Macomb. You got uh, free ultimate car washes Monday through Friday, March 25th through 29th, so still a few days away, but it is is coming up soon. If you're in that area, we appreciate you stopping by, checking it out. Tons of different specials. We'll tell you about those. We got always oh, obviously daily lunch specials that we tell you about every single day. But in addition to that, you can get uh, buy one get one free cookies. You got uh, free mini coffees, blue sky waters, eighty nine cent fountain drinks. Tons of options there with that blue sky. And then here locally, five sixty nine for lunch specials up and down I fifty five throughout North Mississippi as well. And again in the Clark Ford studio. We are. Uh, Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900. Call that number. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. Get your quote, and the rest is up to you. Don't forget, if you're looking for something specific, make sure that you're on their Facebook page. Clark Ford's going to go on there first. So um, 662-257-1900. Guest join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102. Just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow, the Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care. Everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care, pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To uh, book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901 901- Seven five nine three one one one. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic, Monday through Friday, seven thirty a.m. to uh, four p.m. So, a lot of different ways we can go today. A lot of college football going on. Um, <clears throat> we'll start though with uh, Caden Proctor, the uh, Alabama offensive tackle turned Iowa offensive tackle, now about to be turned Alabama offensive tackle again. The poster child for uh, the lawsuits, the injunctions that came down over uh, over winter break as far as um, allowing anyone to transfer whenever they would like at this point. Uh, Caden Proctor taking full advantage of that. So he's from Iowa. He idolized uh, one of the former op- Iowa offensive tackles. I forget the guy's name. Even wore his number in high school. Led his high school team to a couple Iowa State titles. It's committed to Iowa for a while, mm-hmm. I think in 2019, 2020, somewhere in there. I think that's right. He uh, ends up not signing with Iowa, going to Alabama, then getting in the portal, getting uh, courted, and then signed by Kirk Ferentz there for the Hawkeyes. He accepted a large NIL check he did. from their collective. He even did a car dealership. He even did real NIL um, there in Iowa City. And then this week he Scoot has – your chair that way just a little. Yep. There you go. We can see you better. Yep. Well, that's what we want. And then he decided this week, he told Kurt that he is no longer going to uh, play tackle for Iowa. He's getting in the portal. He can't do it until April 15th, but he's going to do it at that point. And he's headed back to Tuscaloosa. So we have this we is... have our complete poster child for the idiocy of the current era. This is stupid. There's no other, there's no other way. There's... Lane Kiffin did a laughing emoji at it. I, I tweeted, this is just jumping the shark. This is dumb. It's it's dumb. Yes, People can say what they want. And I know we, we love college football. Everybody loves college football. And right now, most of our audience really loves this transfer portal thing because Ole Miss is winning. That's it. Understand, that's the only reason that you like it. Yeah, Iowa doesn't like the portal today. Well, it's dumb. It's not, a, it's not about... Because there's no contract. There's no rule. Yes. So, I mean, like... If you you trade a player to a team, there is a contract that doesn't let him automatically be done, traded again. So, I mean... I guess trade, sure, but free agent. Here's here's my thing. Like, we had a big conversation yesterday about access and coverage and stuff. Why are we even covering... I mean, why are we covering spring football? You can't promise me that all these guys will still be here in August. Are we really going to break down what we see in April? Because a kid can leave. 
I mean, Walter Nolan could go back to Texas A&M. There's no rule against it. Sometime, uh, unless there is a rule I'm unaware of, and even if there is, I don't think it matters because there are no rules at this point. There are no rules. There is going to be some point in this next basketball season if there's not some type of change where a player plays for a team in December and plays against the same team in January. Supposedly, there's a rule against that. Good luck. But good luck enforcing it. Go to court and win it then. Who's going to enforce it? Yeah. Because it it was the, it's the problem with, it's not, it, it is today's problem and it's today's leadership failures. But it's the leadership failures for years when you had a system that didn't make complete sense. Yeah. And you didn't do anything to safeguard or fix it to this point because these cases keep going to court and the courts look at them like businesses and going, well, you guys are idiots. So, no, you're not winning without really a care for what it's doing to a situation because courts don't care about that. Sure. It's not their problem. So that's how we got here. But holy hell. It's just stupid. I mean, what would you say if Quinshawn Judkins decided to come back? Yeah, Quinshawn goes, ah, you know, Travion Henderson came back. I'm not I'm not RB1 in Columbus. Or I'm just, headed to Oxford. Or just they they paid me more money. Yeah. Because that's all Alabama did. Because Caleb Downs is going back to Alabama, too. Is he? Yeah. They left. So DeVore the, kept recruiting they've come him. Up, they've come up with more money. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's get right to it. They came up with more money. They had a tackle problem. They fixed it by paying that guy more money. And so they just go bring him back. So, no more pro sports. No, no, no. no. Dansby Swanson left the Braves, signed with the Cubs. If he had, and, and hey, who knows? Two weeks into last April, he might have gone, damn it, I screwed up. But if he wants to go to the Cubs and go, hey, I want to go back to Atlanta, the Cubs are going to say, all right, well, uh, tell Atlanta to give us their entire farm system and these three dudes. Otherwise, you're under contract here. You can retire. And we won't pay you anymore. It plays. It's it's, it's just not pro. The, the whole it's pro sports and the people in the national media and I love some of them. They're they're friends. They are so for the player that it is. Com, they, they they. It almost proves to me with some of them that they're not parents. You you would you would never have just no rules in your house. <laughs> It's what I actually really laughed when I was doing some stuff this morning to do pre pod pre pod planning. Is this SC, this USC thing, the labor board trial deal? You know where they're trying to figure out if they're employees of the school or whatever. The sure. SC court case. Sure. They were doing. I, I don't know. I, I'd hate to call it depositions. I don't know what the hell exactly they were doing, but they were doing interviews in lead up to this case in whatever fashion. And they interviewed the band director yesterday for like three and a half hours including inane things like you guys get dressed the same way as football players to then go represent the university right and the point is if a football player is an employee why the hell is not everybody employed that's associated with the university in any way and now what sc is actually doing is they're not sure they can win the case or this is sc not the players remember so they're stalling and not to get political in case there is a change in November, because it would be a new board of a board. They would be up against under Trump. That would be more likely to allow them to win than currently, because right. history says this, there was a, there was a case with a certain school against the board under Clinton. Something got approved. It got reversed under Bush. And then whatever happened under under Bush got reverted back to Obama and vice versa. This has been happening for years where they wait on a change in, in, in party partisan politics to get a new board in and then change. But point me is, I mean, we are making so many mockeries of the whole thing right now that, I mean, I, I do wonder when we look back in 24 months and go, Holy hell. Cause that's where we are. I mean, but I'm watching the thread there. It's, it's, the good for Alabama. It's what it, it's. Most people seem to still be for the. They they like the chaos of it. Maybe that and maybe college football is just burning. They proof. like the chaos because they can get clicks and have a topic every day. They don't like the chaos if fans do stop giving a crap. But the fans seem to give a crap. That's my point. It it, it, it appears that that's that that college football yeah. is burn proof. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at the stream grind. Great example. I mean, listens to our show as an Auburn fan. Credit to you. Appreciate you. Love you. I only care about the games now. I don't care about anything else. 
Well, I've had you lose him. Oh, there's no question. Well, I mean, I'm going to tell you. I, I'm, I'm going to be Again, honest. Again, that's an Auburn fan who listens to our show every day. I'm going to be honest. I've watched college football all of my life. If I weren't paid to watch it, I wouldn't watch it anymore. Yesterday would have been that. No, that's too far. That's it. I'm done. I mean, I'm being serious. Yeah. Yesterday would have been the day. I probably shouldn't say this on a podcast because, I, you know, I, I'm supposed to be go gung-ho. This is dumb. This is stupid. This is an utter waste of your time. Yeah, no one is stopping someone as a student transferring. They're stopping you from playing football if you had rules. That's why, like somebody said, devil's advocate, a student can transfer as much. Yes, but they can't play football. Okay, yeah, but, but Caden Proctor didn't just transfer. He took money. Yeah. He took money. That, that is, That's a huge part of this. That is a contract. If, if, if an Iowa student transfers to Alabama and gets a scholarship, when he leaves and goes back to Iowa, that scholarship is null and void. Yes. He, he, he essentially, when, when, look, when he transfers to Iowa and, and takes NIL money, he's essentially signing with Iowa. But the problem is that you don't, like you said a minute ago, sign with Kirk Ferentz. No, he didn't. Mm. I mean, not correcting you, yeah, but no, yeah. he didn't. And that's part of the problem. Yeah. Walter Nolan could leave Ole Miss and go back to Texas A&M. We now know that. It's why Lane Kiffin. Frankly, A&M does a lot of stuff in their contracts to try to keep rights even after someone leaves. It's, it's why Lane Kiffin yesterday. I won't get into the off-the-record part of it. Yeah, you but, can dub tell, though. So. But there's a reason that people say, well, how come you guys don't get any access? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can no, say this. No, this. this is very relevant into the, the scope of the conversation. Go ahead. Because a lot of media, we joke about depth charts. I don't do depth charts because two reasons. One, they're not really pertinent. Most of the time. There's a rotation, not a depth chart. Yes. And two, I understand that the people who I cover despise them with a passion. Ole Miss puts one out on the Monday before the first game, and they never really even update it. And it's got the word or all over it. Why? Because so much of their focus right now in the spring is not losing their own guys. Lane got asked yesterday about, are you going to look in the – transfer portal for running backs and his answer was yeah i mean yeah sure sure but he knows hey people are recruiting my roster he now knows i i can't run the risk of a bunch of media guys coming out to practice and immediately and, and one of the media entities that we quote compete against end quote did it immediately yesterday. They We had 10 to 12 minutes of access, and he immediately put out an offensive line depth chart. On March the 19th, they don't play a game for six months, man. He can't help it. But in the old days, you could, five years ago, you could do that stuff. Yeah. Now, if... The depth, you put a depth chart. It is chart. literally detrimental to the program. You put a depth chart out on on three, okay? High school coaches, parents, uncles, friends, take it as gospel. Even though he was out there for 10 minutes, the ludicrous, and I, I mean, it's stupid. It's so stupid. He was out there for 10 minutes, and all he saw were some drills. He didn't see one team snap. He doesn't know that that was the depth chart. But it looks like that's what it was. How? Based on what? I don't blame Lane Kiffin for closing it up. I, in fact, well, no, th- for Lane Kiffin, it makes complete sense. He should. In any other, it, it, it takes away things he has to worry about later. Any other coach should. You should not allow media at your practices right now. Now, do fans lose in that? In that? Sure, 100%. sure, of course. Do fans we, lose in everything we're doing right now? We we lose because we don't really know the, it's the irony of irony. Where they make all the money because people watch the games, and then you just hurt the people every day. Yes, congratulations. Yes. That's what happens here. That's what happens. It's you guys who are getting screwed. But look, I think something's coming here in the next few weeks as it pertains to spring football. That's going to change, and that most people won't care, but a few people will. A few people want a spring game. There's a rumor out there that there's not going to be one. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I think spring games are obsolete. I do. I, oh, I'm really hoping for what you're referring to. But, you know, I think they're obsolete. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people want them. 
But if you play a spring game, hypothetically, if a guy doesn't start for the white team or the green team, or even is on the white team or the green team, if all the other dudes are on the other team, if all the starters are on the green team and he's on the white team, well, his parents are like, hey, you're not going to play. If quarterback A is the head of the white team and quarterback B is the head of the green team and quarterback C is the backup somewhere, you know what I mean? Yes. There you are. I mean, no, you guys are losing. Of course. You're the loser in this. Of course. You're the loser in all this, and you're also being asked to pay for it, and your eyeballs are paying for everything. So that's the system. And and don't get me wrong. You're you're not missing. I mean, I wrote about Jackson Dart yesterday. I'm going to write about um, um, Jared Ivey today. I'll go back out there tomorrow. We're going to get post-practice interviews with three players tomorrow. I'll write about those players. It's fine. You're still getting content. You still get to read about your team. But do I really understand? Do I really know the team? Not really. I, 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 there's so many new faces. I'm out there yesterday going, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? And it's only 10 minutes. I don't, I don't know how anybody goes to those and makes all these observations. But the fact that they try to just validates what coaches are saying, which is I can't let you guys out here. You're going to create more problems for me. It's because the portal opens April 15th. It's what sucks overall in the sport right now. And I didn't really necessarily put my plan for the day, but it's true. I'm think, thinking about it. Take basketball. We talk about all the time the builds, what's fun, right? Yes. You know, pro sports, builds fun. Frankly, used to be in college, the build was really fun. I think the build in, in all sports is fun, but you only get it in professional sports now. Well, Completely, because that's what I was thinking about. Was you get Chris Beard, and I'm not blaming Beard here. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure. You get Chris Beard, you get a top ten national coach in your program, mm-hmm. wins twenty games in year one. I, I know people are grading him. It was a hell of an improvement. I'm not bashing Chris Beard's coaching job this year, even though sure. it fell apart like hell at the end. Yeah. There's no build. There's ten to twelve new players next year. It is simply a complete transition to seeing how these dudes work. Everybody is Kentucky basketball on how they put a roster together. Frankly, except for Kentucky. They're one of the few that's going back the other way a little bit Mm -hmm. and have some multi-year dudes. It's the irony of the irony. Yeah, I don't, I mean, as an objective observer, I don't see how you guys stay connected to it. I really don't. Like, I turned on, I turned on the Cubs spring training game last night because Caroline was there, my daughter. Okay. Kyle Hendricks pitched for the Cubs last night. He's been your guy for a long time. Kyle Hendricks has been with the Cubs since 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, Ian Ian Happ was back in left field after an injury. Ian Happ's been with the Cubs, I think, since 2019, 2018. You have continuity. This is Dansby Swanson's second year, and barring a trade, he'll be there for another five. You, You have people, Christopher Morrell at third base even, has been in the system for a minute. The kid that pitched uh, at Oklahoma against Ole Miss in the title game. Kate Horton. People are raving about him. He might come up this year. Mm-hmm. But one way or the other, I can follow him, and unless they trade him, he's going to be a Cub for a minute. Six years unless they trade him. Mm-hmm. You can uh, allow yourself to get attached. Carson and I went to the, the Grizzlies-Thunder game the other night. Those guys, they've been out there for a minute. He can he can safely put on his Jalen Williams jersey, the Sa- Santa Clara Jalen Williams, by the way. He can put on his Santa Clara Jalen Williams jersey, and he can he can know that hey, barring a trade or something horrific happening, Jalen Williams is going to be with the Thunder for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. You don't have anything like Matt Morrell played four seasons at Ole Miss. He's a dinosaur. If if I told if I asked you when's the next time that a player signs with Ole Miss and plays for four seasons at Ole Miss. When does that happen again in basketball? Because the problem with that is it has to be someone. Well, it's one of okay four years. It takes. And, he's, athletic, got, okay. and he's got to sign with Ole Miss. That's my point. So and play four. That's my years. point. So there's a couple things here. It has to be this window or this certain thread ac- athletically where. He's good, can hang out, can play, but not draft good. So he has to stay four years athletically Uh in basketball. That matters. And then he has to sign with Ole Miss and want to be at Ole Miss. He has to care about the school because he – I'm going to make this easier for you. And you can even make it football. I'll even throw football in in your pool. 
Football or men's basketball? It's a little less in football simply because there's so many people. You can get one. Okay. But in basketball, it has to be somebody who really wants to play at Ole Miss, doesn't want to go shop, mm -hmm. but then also is good enough that the school doesn't want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a oh. that is a window. I mean, as, that is an NFL throwing window as, on what you need. As that game wound to an end last Thursday, I thought to myself, that's the last one of those guys you're going to see for a long time. Yeah, football has some – you can get lost a little. Won't it's be, a little different. Won't be many, though, that sign a scholarship yeah. and stay four years. Well, look, Jackson Dart feels like freaking somebody who's been around seven years. He started multiple games for USC as a freshman. Six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He started half a season at SC. Mm -hmm. But it feels like he is damn Methuselah and only And only days. transferred because of a coaching change. Had there not been a coaching change, he was staying at SC. He was perfectly happy there. Yeah. Instead, yeah. he is the face of the decade for Ole Miss. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I miss the damnedest thing. <laughs> but, I mean, Caden Proctor can just leave, go to Iowa, collect money, leave with the money. Leave come, with the money. And people go, I'm for the players. You're not that much for the players, are you? Because that's kind of criminal. Oh, it's crappy. I mean... Yeah, I mean, the word laundry is a powerful thing because the Alabama social media goes, welcome home, bud. Love you. It's like you wanted to. You were literally sending them death threats two months ago. Yeah, literally. Well, he changed his mind. Okay, so you give the money back. Yeah, I mean, Doors makes a good point. I mean, you like in football, you can have a Caleb Warren type. Good player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hang out. But there won't be many of them. No. Well, and a good center goes for pretty good on the open market. Ain't nothing. Yeah, the, my point is there won't be many. No, and, no. and it wasn't that long ago. Like when I was covering Auburn back in the day, some of the good stories were the guy that worked his way up, got his opportunity, and then shined, right? I mean, that, that doesn't exist now. Oh, Jalen Jones coming back from injury. Of course. Brian Bennett taking a minute and being really good as a redshirt sophomore where you went, hey, yeah, I like that dude yeah. in recruiting. Yeah. Good he, dude. He'd either get processed or get or leave now. Yeah. You rooted for like a Itavius Mathers or Devin Thomas to find a click as a junior because sure. he'd been with you for a minute. Sure. He's your guy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really happen anymore. You don't have a guy anymore. You got a uniform. You got a number. It's, it's why I asked Lane yesterday about, is this model of spring antiquated? His answer was, I don't know. We keep changing everything so fast that I can't. <laughs> everything changes. Yeah. But his basic answer was, I mean, are you really truly focused on development or are you more focused on installation? Cause the whole, like, like you almost laugh out loud at the, someone asked the other day and they meant it genuinely. I laughed, but it was, they, they didn't mean it in a way to be ridiculed, but it was talking about bowl games. If you're not in the playoffs, can you imagine? Like, let's take Ole Miss. We talk about Ole Miss. Ole Miss is playoffs or bust. Eight and four. Gator Bowl. Can you imagine Lane trying to tell these guys, hey, 15 practices to get better for the Gator Bowl? They'd laugh out loud. I mean, I, I can't even imagine how many kids would opt out. 30? 40? I mean, Florida State just had an entire team opt out for an access bowl. I mean, can you imagine just telling veteran guys, hey, we're going to practice for two hours today in the Manning Center? To get ready. Because we play NC State in the Gator Bowl. And, and oh, I need you to... Meet up on Christmas Day in Jacksonville, please. Yeah. I mean, I just think guys will go, man, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do? You're going to stop them? You're going to take their money back? I guess you can stop paying them. And it's it, look, it's back to my thing of the day. Games are secondary. Record is primary. Games are secondary. I'm right. Yeah. The actual game is secondary. It's a scary place. A sure. Really scary play. Sure. I mean, it's one of the things I'm I'm interested in in this season coming up is when a team loses its second or third game, the fans just go, okay, well, I'm not doing it. Ole Miss more. has a godsend of a schedule because they can basically breathe and get to six and zero. Oh. It's a godsend of a schedule because yeah. you're in the playoff race before LSU. Sure. If you play LSU in week two and Oklahoma in week three, you're going, God, you better oh, ride. It could potentially be a disaster. Instead. You're number three in the country, and you're kind of there. It's and so, a perfect schedule. And so, you know, we'll all laugh at it, but, like, 
take Mississippi State, for example. They're not a playoff contender. Uh, they've got some first-year coach excitement they and buzz. could be excited about the eight and four because you're looking to the maybe playoff next year same thing but you could talk yourself into it no this affects 25 schools 25 schools tell themselves we're a playoff team if things go right and they're the ones that have this baggage we're discussing from a fan standpoint mm -hmm. the players i don't know but fans 25 schools essentially the preseason top 25 but if you're a big 12 team once you lose your second game you're out yeah, because I got one spot. Yeah. Or whatever it is. So, I mean, how do you, you know, you keep people excited? How do you keep players excited? How, how motivated can you keep the players? Because there was a time not so long ago that a six and, I mean, a five and four team was focused on getting bowl eligible. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That was literally a rallying cry inside buildings. I've covered those teams. 2012. I mean, yeah. Huge. Beat State. Yeah, it was a big deal. Now it's, eh. And that was a proof of concept game. Proof of concept doesn't exist because development inside programs don't exist. Yeah. So it's different. Because you recycle the program at the end of the season. Yeah. And I don't I keep I keep waiting for fans to go, I'm done with that. This is stupid. And maybe it's again, maybe the love of the alma mater, the love of the laundry, for lack of a better word, is so powerful that it's flame proof. It's when you lose someone, it's so hard to get them back. That is the problem. Is that even if it's incremental and even if it's small and even if it's minuscule, it's one and one and trickle and then suddenly an exponential. Boom. We'll see. Got plenty of time. Podcast brought to you in part and every day by Better Help. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? Time was unlimited. How would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you. Make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. You talk to a therapist, it's not like a family member or a friend, no preconceived notions. Going in with somebody who's just worried about helping you get to where you need to be, learning about yourself and anything that you need to uh, cope, set boundaries, and get better. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MPW today. 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash M-P-W. Are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with a personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego with Sego Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a free discovery meeting and see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. Brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. It's still a little cool out, but the warm weather's coming right around the corner. You want to make sure that air conditioner is in great shape. Get in touch with uh, the folks at Comer and um, Southern. Uh, if you live in Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, that area, call the people at Comer. If you live in um, Memphis, Hernando, that area, call Southern, 662-801-1777 uh, or 662-429-4429. If you're coming up for uh, baseball soon, make sure you stop at the College Corner. Two locations in the Jackson area, one in uh, Oxford right off of Sisk Avenue with the Oxford Commons, more than 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear. Uh, also check them out online, collegecornerstore.com. And we're brought to you by Argent Wealth. Call Argent Welt's 401k advisory services team today. They'll conduct a complimentary, no obligation benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. Mention that you heard about Argent Welt on the Oxford Exxon podcast, Blue Sky podcast. Get 10% off your first year's fees. And we're brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. Get in touch with John when you want to plan a special trip that creates a lifetime of unique memories. Um, just give him some options. Give him a budget. Give him some parameters. He's going to come up with some ideas for you that you're probably not going to find on your own. And no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. You kind of cracked me up. Hardman says going forward, meet the rebels will really mean meet the rebels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you do. <laughs> you do look forward to like the like. Uh, like, can you imagine at Arkansas this season? I'm thinking. I was thinking of teams that I think are going to be really bad. Okay, you're in the midst of a four and eight season, mm -hmm. and in the third quarter, you're doing the hey, contribute to the collective thing. 
You can't go anywhere without the collective thing. Literally, you go to the urinal, and there is the collective thing. It's yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Restaurants around town, round up for the collective. People are like, man, I, I mean, do the pro sports thing. Can you imagine if I went to a game in Memphis? I was in Memphis the other night. And I go to the bathroom and it's, hey, we'd be better if you guys would pay more for the players. Yeah. Help the ownership. I mean. John needs a bonus. I mean, <laughs> I mean it'd, be, it'd be in the right place at the urinal. I'll tell you that. Must be one of those little cones yeah. that are down at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Piss on the, that. The, exactly. Yeah, the cake things. 100%. I mean, uh, it's just stupid. Uh, Kyle, thanks for Super Chat. Says, do you think Bruce Pearl being outspoken of politics? Uh, Vern Auburn, do you think that hurt them in a tournament selection? I, I don't think it changed their seed. No, no, I don't. I don't. I'd like to think not. No, I'm I, sure I, it. I'm sure it pissed off a few people in Indianapolis, but no. Yeah, that very doubtful that gets through the process for that. Um, all right. I'm. That's more interesting. What else I have? Let's see. Um. As I mentioned at the start of the show, Ole Miss knocked off USM last night, 8-3. Rebels have won 14 of 16, 10 of their last 11. One thing I'll point out uh, as we move off baseball, because we got time for that, they're in Tennessee this weekend. They'll play three against the Volunteers, who uh, will definitely be locked in. That's a very hard place to play these days. But last night, neutral site, uh, Zen Trust Mark, and – Give Raleigh Maddox a lot of credit. Somebody who came back from Tommy John, struggled through a little bit of that recovery last year as far as, you know, didn't look like himself in limited action. And he's really learned to sinker well. I thought it's operated effectively the last three weeks. He's gone at least five innings, three weeks in a row. He's had two quality starts in a row. And his numbers should have been even more tremendous yesterday. Uh, Ole Miss had a clown car of a second inning defensively. It led to three runs, two earned, and... He followed up with that by, I think, allowing the minimum the rest of the way. Went six innings, 93 uh, pitches for him, and gave the offense a chance to uh, pull away, even though Ole Miss was dreadful with runners in scoring position. They were one for 12 yesterday with uh, with runners on. But a second inning that somebody a little weaker mentally, um, somebody who didn't have their stuff, that would have really gotten away because it opened up with a ball hit away from the shift. It was an error on Andrew Fisher. Ole Miss has really not done well with the shift lately because it's – I keep getting asked this, and maybe I'll just throw it myself into the mailbag for the week, is I don't mind the shift at the college level, but two things. Your analytics aren't as good as the pros. You don't have the sample sizes the same way as the pros, and you don't have the location to pitch mm -hmm. the same way in the pros. So if I'm running a shift, that's great, but if I throw a bunch of off-speed stuff on the outside of the plate, that's probably going to get hit the other way. They're not going to pull that. So you're hitting, you're, you're pitching in ways that are going to prevent the shift from being effective for you. And I feel like that's how, how that has happened some as well for, uh, for Ole Miss. But it's, it's a hit away from the shift. There was a chopper off Raleigh Maddox's glove that he couldn't get to. It was just bad luck. Um, they had a collision in the outfield, and a ball fell, led to a to a run. Campbell Smithwick made a textbook play on a a play at the plate. They called catcher interference because they said he was blocking the plate with his foot. Mm. Okay, but yeah, you have a right to the spot. I mean, he literally was like a first baseman to catch the ball, and they said that he was blocking the plate because the runner slid into his foot. It's like you got the whole rest of the plate. Was like, his foot there before he caught the ball? I'm sure it was, and but, I, uh, there's I, the I, rule. I get it, yeah. but it was like the most ticky-tack thing in, yeah. the, in the world. Like, I was like, okay, I mean, sure, but nah. Um, so all those things happen. I mean, Ole Miss got like six outs in the inning if you just play decent defense or don't have some random stuff happen, and Maddox held it to three. He got the last two outside inning, and then again, was really good the rest of the way. His lack of walks, I think he's only walked one in the last 17 innings or two in the last 17 innings. If you have any instability on the weekends, that would play on a Sunday. You don't give sure. somebody free passes. You throw sure. strikes. I mean, that that suddenly looks real. Um, so he's he's been good. It's been a really good sign. And Southern's a good team. I mean, Southern's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Ostrander is going to do a good job in replacement of Barry. And um, we'll see. So, yeah, good good win for Ole Miss. They head to Tennessee, which will be a, a big challenge. Your, your goal is to get one and anything else is – and that's complete a, gravy. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think right? so. Yeah. yeah. If, if 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 not, I'm not aware of it, but I, I think so. 
The SEC sent out the release yesterday, and I copied and pasted it and put it on the board, but I can't remember what it said. Okay. <laughs> it had all the schedules. It did. It's yeah. there. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I saw that Fisher didn't get SEC Player of the Week, but that was the only thing I noticed from the from the release yesterday as it was happening. This is where I, I side with the SEC. That's hard every week. Well, where it, you've had so many different guys have performances, and you have to pick one. And non, especially in non conference right. play, you're not playing each other. Or, or right. well, you know, it's, that was it's, in conference play, but yeah. still. So how do you how do you go about doing that, right? Well, a lot of weeks they do what the SEC basketball part of it does, and they have 15 players be nominated. And yeah. then some weeks they limit it to three. And it's like, well, why this week versus like it doesn't matter. There's no. to the best of my knowledge, there are no stipends attached to SEC Player of the Week. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, uh, Arkansas at Auburn and Mississippi State at A and M are the two Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday okay. series this week. State A and M is interesting in College Station. What Auburn do last weekend? Got swept, which means at Kentucky. No, uh, by Vanderbilt. By Vanderbilt, that's right. Now Vandy's good. Who the hell set up like Butch needs to call the league and go? Hold on a minute. I got Vanderbilt and Arkansas to start my my league schedule here. They're in. It's at home. Maybe they get at least one, but they're in danger of getting run out of this thing before it gets started here with Arkansas this weekend. That's a that's a brutal schedule. Yeah, because. Hmm. You better hit it. You get behind the eight ball, and suddenly, I mean, Ole Miss learned that last year. It can just kind of spiral on you. Oh, God. Listen to this start. Holy crap. Auburn. Vanderbilt, Arkansas, A&M, Tennessee. The first four weekends. Mm. God, you could be. You could wake up two and ten. Easy. And be okay. Like, be a decent team. Yeah. Like, not suck. But be you're done. not okay. But you're done. Yeah. Their schedule... They get Missouri, I guess, congratulations, but it's in Columbia. Yeah. But, I mean, whatever you had on the over-under on Auburn's conference wins, go under. Vanderbilt, Arkansas, A&M, Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi State, LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, Alabama. Whew. That's tough. It's, look, the league's brutal. I mean, that is. The, the, the league is so hard. When you have one bad team in the league, that's mm -hmm. it. One? Yeah. There is. There's one bad team. That's it. Ole Miss doesn't play them, but they also don't play Florida and Vanderbilt. So everybody else is just levels of good. Yeah. Everyone else can beat you. Yeah. Easily if yeah. you do not play good baseball. Yeah. I mean, that's why Mike on Sunday just kind of shrugged. He goes, "Don't play well, you don't win." I mean. Yeah. That's what I told the guys. I mean. He's right. It's cliche, but no, it's true. It's just true. I mean, because the the Friday game between Ole Miss and South Carolina could have gone either way. Then the Saturday game when Ole Miss, they, Ole Miss kind of dominated. And the Sunday game, South Carolina played better and won. It's not complicated. Uh, Ole Miss start times, by the way, because it's Eastern Central, all that stuff. Central times, 535, I think, and noon, I believe, are the times for the, the weekend. I could be wrong on that, but I, I think I'm right. Um, but just be aware that if you see the times, depending on where you're looking, there could be some hour differences in uh, in that. I think Tennessee wins too. I mean, I I don't see Tennessee starting two and four in the league. So that's where I'll go. I'll go. I'll go Tennessee two out of three for the weekend. The, it's and the, it's Ole Miss safe, did its job. It's the safe prediction. Yeah. If you give Ole Miss four and three with three conference wins around SM USM on the win week, you'll, you'll you'll take that and move on because yeah. the middle of Ole Miss's schedule is kind of the soft-ish spot yeah. that you might can. Put a couple together and make hay. Like I said, you're still, if we need to change the ceiling, great. But right now, you're still just getting to 14. Your goal one is to get back into the postseason. Yeah, of And course. then anything else, we'll, we'll go from there when the situation I mean, arises. Frankly, goal one right now is to get to Hoover. Well, it's, they didn't get to Hoover last year. It's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You're climbing out. You fell into a big hole. That's what they did. It started one and eight last year, I think. That sounds right. And then finished very bad. Did you watch the abomination that was Virginia basketball last I, night? I did not. I did not. I watched. Um, they had 14 points at halftime. Yeah. They um, didn't score for almost 10 minutes at one point. They gave complete credence to the people that go, my God, quit ignoring analytics. Because, mm -hmm. look, I don't typically agree with our boy Pat, but he's right. We didn't get a really fun Indiana State team who leads the country in offensive efficiency. 
What was Indiana State's net? It was bad. I mean, it wasn't great, but yeah. they were twenty eight and six. They had really good metrics. Had a fun story. The fat, I guess that's the fat my kid point. Is good. if we're gonna do something that's off kilter, why not Indiana State that's fun instead of Virginia, who's just a name? And I know you're saying TV. I get it. Well, my but answer, TV got made fun of last night. My answer is that the the NCAA tournament selection committee isn't about fun. They don't like fun. They're all just they're just I don't know. But they didn't go by metrics either. Virginia had a much worse net than anybody else. I mean, put a St. John's in, and if you watched St. John's in the Big East tournament, they were a tournament team. I mean, they played Connecticut tooth and nail for thirty something minutes. Oh, Indi- never mind. Indiana State's net was 29. 29. That was easy. They decided that was a one-bid league. Yes. Period. Yes. Yeah, what are we doing? I don't know. I, look, I agreed with Pat. I'm going to give you one more. I agreed with Jamil Hill last night. Whoa. It's true. She goes, at some point, it's on us because we watched the crap and then justify it and let them go, no, you guys watch, so we did the right thing. We watch the crap. We I, watch Virginia play basketball. I agree with that. Kind of goes back to the first part of our conversation yeah. today. No, at some point it's on the viewer, and go. You know what? Nope. You're you're done. You're bad at your job. I'm not going to watch you put the shit on the floor. It's kind of what I'm waiting for in the others, and, and it might not be possible because the numbers don't show it. But it might come to a point where people go, "This is stupid. I'm not watching," and then they don't. Here's the truth with the committee or anything else. And I know it's hard. We'll go back to yesterday's conversation, blah, blah, blah. You didn't. No, yeah, no, but that was easy. Nobody forced you to be on the committee. But that was a freebie. You took it. My point yeah. is, you're not, there's no gunpoint. You can say no. Yeah, that was a freebie. They use net when they want to use net, and they use every little metric, and they justify it depending on what they just freaking want to do. Mm-hmm. Auburn's net was four, and they're a four seed. Yeah. No, I mean, Auburn should be a You two. told me about net for all these years. Nope, net's what we're going to do. We're net. And then yet, I guarantee some point during that selection committee show, they justified a decision with net. So they just simply use it where they want to use mm-hmm. it. Yeah, they wanted, And then for somebody else, it's, well, non-conference schedule. They wanted to send a name to Dayton. So they did. So they're, they sent they're, a chan- so, uh, they're so determined to make Dayton matter. Virginia's net was 57. I mean. Thank you. They didn't look like a tournament team. And I do believe that. JM's right. The tournament's for the casual fan, not the diehards. Of course. It's for people who have no idea who Ken Pomeroy is. Yeah. It's not for people who go, hold on a minute. Analytically, that makes no sense. It's for the people who fill out a bracket based on mascots. Colors. Silliness. By the way, credit to Sports Talk Mississippi. Michael Borky had me really cracking up. Uh about picking his entire bracket off what mascots went in a fight. I, I like I was legitimately laughing out loud. Uh he was debating um a cougar versus a Spartan and I, I really was laughing uh a lot. His point was typically cougar would beat any man, but I mean a Spartan if we're talking about like King Leonidas, like that's yeah. a different animal for lack of a better well, word. Well the Spartan would have a lot of armor and then he'd have that huge spear. Yeah. Because one one And sh- a cougar's not that large. Yeah one shot and the cougar's down. Yeah, the, I was watching a clip. It was on YouTube. Credit to them for putting them there. And it was it was that, and then Tiger versus Bear. Ooh. It was Clemson against Baylor. He was leaning Tiger because of the athleticism. I think so too. But bears are so big and strong. Because if you ever if they ever got you, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a cat versus a dog in a way. It's, but like you ever see like a Bengal tiger, you're like, like I don't, I want no part of that. Because he's also the most athletic thing that yeah. there is. I mean, he's just a beast. I mean, you know how quick your house cat is scratching you. He's a big house cat. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I've told this on the podcast. I was reading that the house cat is the best or most efficient apex predator in, in the world. It's like kill rate versus things it kills in the yard is higher than any other animal. House cat, birds, squirrels, whatever. It's. Snakes. Oh, yeah. Like the house cat is like the, the MFR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin's right. UAB would have a real shot if it was just all about mascots. A dragon? I mean. Well, that Borky said he thinks there's one. I, I'll give him credit again. I'm, okay. It was a good segment. Really they breathe is. fire. Cyclone. Oh, because you couldn't be able to How catch it. How the hell it. you beat Iowa State? You can't catch it. Yeah, what are you doing? It just destroys everything. And it just and it lifts up and goes. And then drops back down and tears up everything. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Creighton is screwed. Yeah, Blue, Blue Jays, Jays, come on. You're done. I mean, there's no <laughs> chance. 
But UAB <laughs> would go far. They would. I mean, yes. a fire-breathing dragon. Who does he play in the first round? Uh, San Diego State. Oh, Aztecs. Okay. I mean. Dragon's going to beat the Aztec. I mean, all day long. And then you get a dragon versus a tiger. You're, you're good. It's, well, it's a hell of a fight. He breathes fire. He does. I mean, at the end of the day, he just, breathes fire. He just cooks the tiger. Well, the house cat loves its people. Well, I'm sorry, it tolerates its people. Your cat loves you. Oh, every he time loves I, it. Every oh. time I talk to you in your house, I hear the cat going. Burr, oh no, he he I'm like he, he like sits on my shoulder. Yeah, no, I know. He, he's he's. But he will screw up a mole or a vole outside now. Like, oh, has he done some killing? Oh yeah, like, okay. and you know, he brings up to your front door. Yeah, I, show off my bounty. Yes, hundred percent. I mean, I hope Andy wins on Friday. It'll be really fun. Twelve forty-five, I think. So that is the. Oh hell the start yeah! Time. I want Andy to win. I, speaking of, while I'm crediting people, Will Wade was on Mince's podcast uh, show yesterday. <laughs> He's great. Wake up with Mince. Yeah. <laughs> If you didn't watch it, you can at least go find the segment. <laughs> is they were discussing Mintz getting fired, and Will Wade, the day he got fired, sent him a text said, "I too was misunderstood." It, I mean, it, get the joke. It was really funny. Well, right, then he was I, talking I, about how he and Bill Self both like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Did you see this? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, not, said, "Not the only thing we have in common." <laughs> yeah. I'm Team Will Wade lately, man. Oh, I he mean, cracks sign, me up. Sign me up. He cracks me up. I mean, he might be the one guy that is so whatever that he can just be fine in this dumb era and go, sure, whatever. Well, I mean, his answer is the right one, which is, look, if you can get more, go. You should do it. I'm not going to worry about it. Just keep rolling. Mark gets a good point. Cats make you work for their affection, but they don't sell out the way dogs do. A dog will leave you in a heartbeat for a biscuit from somebody else. Oh, that's true. Cats got his person and... Yeah, he'll he'll go to war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you could literally give a Labrador retriever a piece of cheese, and he would go eat the cheese while you slit the throats of everyone in the house. If I brought the right food, Rizzo would leave with me immediately and have no thought about anything else. I don't know that he'd ever even remember me. (laughs) And right now he would tell you that I'm the greatest thing on earth. But if I gave him unlimited steak... Oh, He's you, in. You wouldn't have to do that. You just give him some of that American cheese, man. He's good? Yeah. Oh, he likes just cheese slices? He hears the refrigerator door open, and dude's like, <laughs> what's going on? What you got? And if, you, and if he hears the wrapper, oh. Oh, it's cheese. Loves it. Really? Apples, watermelon. Basically, if the refrigerator door opens, he comes into the room like, hey, what's going on? What you got? What's happening in here? Cheese is one of those things for dog. I, I've I've gotten to where I've had to give my old dog uh, Prozac a lot of days, and just getting on up there. This situation we're in, and cheese cubes. You can put a, any kind of medicine you oh, want yeah. in a cheese cube, and swallowed, and not even watermelon. You put the pills inside. I, it's the a watermelon. quote from Meet the Parents. I apologize. I have not seen that movie in ten years. Okay, I, I, I get it. Neil's never seen it. I'm sure. So Meet the Parents. Like, yeah. I think I Robert have seen, De Niro. Yeah, I've seen Meet the Bennett, uh, Yeah, Ben Stiller. I've seen that several okay. times. I just don't remember all the words. Yeah, I I didn't get the quote. Sorry. It's been a minute. I'm getting worse on my pop culture. I've got to get better, if nothing, just for the podcast. Like, I, 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 I'm I admitting it. It's, I don't know. Sometimes your ignorance of pop culture can be endearing. Well, that's You don't true. keep up with it because you just don't. But if we both don't know it at all, it becomes more problematic. It's well, more I, fun if one of us knows yeah. it and the other doesn't. I watched... Uh, the octopus again. They got to the the episode three, the part where they just threw in the part about Kennedy out of nowhere. I was like, okay, wait a minute. What are we doing? I kind of lost interest at that point. I was in for two and a half episodes. So now you're done? Not done. I'll finish. Are you going to finish the series? It's just four. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost finished with it. Oh, there's only one more. I finished episode three, so we'll I'll watch four. Okay. I probably will have to. You're a little bothered here. Laura probably won't watch it. I, th- I could tell she was checked out. Oh, really? At the end, yeah. She was, like, wait, she was like, wait, what? And I was like, I know. I don't. Really? So, the part about the Kennedy, the driver turning around and shooting Kennedy. I just don't buy that. Do you no, buy that? No. I don't even know a ton about it, and I don't buy it. That's not my conspiracy. So the theory is that the Zapruder tape was doctored. And what we see every day is the doctored version. But in the real version, you can see the 
driver. That literally, that was cut out of the tape and put back together. The driver turns and shoots. I don't believe that. In a convertible with people around? Nobody saw that. There were witnesses. Nobody said, oh, yeah, the driver shot him. Come on. Feels problematic. Yeah, just that defies all logic. I do that, Doors, if I'm ever speaking to students now. I forget just how young they are. I will make some reference to something before, like, 2005. They weren't alive. Yeah. They didn't exist. No. And they don't care. No. I mean, a little. I, I, I told a story about a DVD, and half the room went, huh? And I went, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, we had these things. We even had to used to rewind these things. I know, crazy, right? Oh, I know. Our phones had cords. We would get the really long cord because you could stretch it in your room when you were talking. I used to work at a place in Ruston called National Video. It was a D- VCR rental place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was telling Carson about it, and he was looking at me like, I mean, I, I must have looked like a You show up, and they Martian. might not have it. You go ask them, when are you getting in? And then you're praying that cat returns it on the right day. Yeah. And you, like when movie galleries start letting you reserve, it was a, <laughs> like, whoa, hold on a minute. I can put my name on it when it comes in. And that was a problem, too, because if you didn't, if you checked somebody out and they took the video and then you realized, oh, God, that was on the list. Oh, God. And then they come in, you're like, oh, well, so what happened was. You see, I screwed up. And so, yeah, your next two videos are free and then you get yelled at after. I couldn't wait to get out of that job. I hated it. <laughs> and then Phones. Phones. That's the part I always tell them. Like you don't know, you don't, you don't know the 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 nervous pain of calling a girl, and the parent picking up, and the dad picking up. Yeah. Like if mom picked up, you were kind of okay, but if dad picked up, there was a decent chance that there was going to be five minutes there. And you look back now, and you're like, he was just, yeah, completely screwed. He didn't care, but he was messing with me. But at the time, you're like. He's interviewing me, and if this doesn't go well, I'm not getting Or if he's really a joker, he goes, you go, hey, is Amy there? And he goes, who's Amy? And you go, oh, God, I'm just going to hang up now. I'm done. Yeah. Like, he's completely messing around, yeah. but I'm done. I'm, I'm I'm finished. It's over. I learned to not ask, "Is are they there? You Can would, I, may I speak to? Say, hello, Mr. whatever. How are you today? How are you? Yes. Then... At How that, about them Mets? At that point, he's disarmed a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, and you can go for the kill right there and say, I was wondering if I might be able to speak to Tracy. Is today. Amy available? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a big one, even kind of probably when I was in high school, was, hey, I need to call you back after nine when my minutes are free. Oh. Because you had free nights and weekends, and it started at like seven or eight or nine or whatever. Yeah. And... Yeah, I can talk whenever, but and then you weren't sure, does it automatically, when it gets to be eight or nine, does it automatically know, or do I need to hang up and call you back Probably so the meter doesn't call, keep running? Probably got to hang up and call back. Yeah, that was one, too. That's a good one. Yeah, But I was, I was before cell phones. Yeah. I had a pager for a hot minute there. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Never had a pager. Yeah, very drug dealer of me for that like, is for like drug dealer. Three <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you go pick up your lawn's looking great, sir. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Did you see that that touchdown the other night? Man, George Michael sports machine. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, it was playing into um, I saw you get the unsports, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty there on Friday. What happened? Uh, it was just, a, it was just, just a, something happened. It's why, like I said, it was the thing the other day. It's why every movie from like 1978 to 1985 was the parents left town. Yeah. Because there are no ring cameras. There's no videos. You go back and watch some of those movies, and they're pretty creepy. I mean, on today's standards. Like I said, I I, I like listened the to it the other day. I, I think I, I think I said this on the podcast the other day. I was when I, I ran the other day to Bill Simmons rewatchables on Risky Business, and they were going through it and going, you know, that was a deeper movie than we thought. I was like, was it? Was it though? Really? Yeah. 
It was a kid's fantasy about a hooker. I mean, like, let's really break this down. <laughs> Parents left town and a prostitute was involved. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> All right, I can't segue out of that, but I'll tell you, this podcast is brought to you by the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation. Spring sports are underway. Single-game tickets for baseball now on sale. They return home next weekend. 2024 football season ticket and donation renewal deadline March 31st. So get your priority points up before seat or parking selections. Call the foundation, 662-915-7159. And for more information, that's give2athletics.com. That's G-I-V-E-T-O, athletics.com. Um, brought to you by Service Specialist. Staffing and recruiting agency. They've been connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. It's always free for the candidate. If your company is looking to hire quality, hard to find talent, it's, um, it's a no lose deal. The only way you pay is if you hire someone that they send. So you've got nothing to lose. Give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 601 573 9242 or check out their new and improved website service, specialistltd.com. Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square, Opa, is the perfect place to plan your uh, company dinner, festive party event. Fabulous food, great craft libations. They can accommodate up to 200 guests at Opa for cooking, for catering, I should say, or booking information. Contact Jeannie, 601-421-7147. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. From routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. Schedule your appointment today. Take the first step toward a better version of yourself at CorinthDental.com. Are you a displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify? Either way, Andy Ludicky can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses, uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy, put your life and career in your own hands. It's 100% free. You've got nothing to lose. It's MyPerfectFranchise.net. Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Podcast is brought to you by Prime Shrimp, primeshrimp.com. A lot of different flavors for you, including their newest, the soy ginger. It's great with the bocce style dishes. Throw some of the protein, some veggies, some rice in there. It's excellent, as well as their best selling one. That's the New Orleans style barbecue. They got their Louisiana shrimp bowl, a little spicier option, the signature, full meals in a bag, and much more. And we're going to help you out. Use code RG, buy five pouches or more. You get 25% off. So try a few of everything or get your favorite stock up. Stays in the freezer fewer than 10 minutes. Freezer to plate. But again, with code RG, 25% off. Primeshrimp.com. So Clemson suing the ACC. This comes on the hills of uh, Florida State suing the ACC. Everybody say, suing the ACC yeah. here at this point. Um, timing is not a coincidence no. as uh, as well. And I'm going to try to get through a couple things here. I'm using mostly Ross Dellinger's story from uh, from Yahoo as my source material for this. It is not a coincidence that yesterday uh, was when it was completely finalized on the amount of money that the uh, college football playoff and the new rights deal will get to the different conferences. And uh, that those numbers are, sorry, the Big Ten and the SEC are each going to receive 29% of the $1.3 billion annual payout. That is $1.3 billion Mm -hmm. for an annual payout there. Teams in those leagues will see their annual payouts nearly quadruple from the current figure to the tune of $21 million to $23 million. The ACC and Big 12 will get 17.1% and 14.7% of the distribution, respectively. A striking difference that exacerbates the revenue gap and draws a tangible dividing line between the power two and the other two. It's very true. ACC schools will receive about 7 to $10 million less annually than those in the Big 10 and the SEC. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, one ACC administrator said, combine that with a gap in TV revenue, dot, 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 that mm-hmm. is already going on as well. Yep. Um, with projections, Big Ten and SEC schools earning nearly double in annual conference distribution as those in the ACC and Big 12, and it's almost entirely attributable to that revenue for those two things. So here's the question. And what Clemson's saying, and it, we can get into legal minutia, but essentially they're saying that their rights, their grant of rights exit – does not exist, that they should be able to just leave, basically. Yes. And they also say that when they leave, ESPN should not hold any rights over their contracts or their distribution. 
those are the two things that mm-hmm. they're essentially arguing. I can get way more complicated, but that's the that's the gist of this. Well, if you talk to some people who are sort of in the know, they'll tell you that these schools were never going to do this until they knew they had a home. I think they both know they have homes. You do. I do. Because that's what's interesting about this. Again, I'm reading from Dellinger. And he has kind of four questions that he's answering in this story. And the first one is, where do they land? Or maybe that's the the premise. And there's four options here. You could have complete ACC implosion. This thing just falls apart. Everything Mm -hmm. breaks away. Because what's funny about that is, if the league drops below 15 members then ESPN can simply drop the whole contract because the ACC is no longer fulfilling its side from a team standpoint. Mm -hmm. Also, ESPN could elect next February, here in 11 months, to decline to even opt into the final nine years of a contract with the ACC. Mm -hmm. So ESPN holds ultimate power here, where at two points they could simply go, yeah, we're good, moving on. So there you go. There you have it. Right, ESPN. They could save everyone here and just blow it up. Because ESPN looks at this collective of of teams, schools. Some of them are attractive to ESPN. Some of them aren't. Because the rumor that's going around is that something along those lines could happen. Those two schools, plus one I'm going to get to in a second, get out. Mm -hmm. And then teams like Louisville and Duke that have basketball ability go to the Big 12. Because that's becoming a basketball conference is what it is. Sure. I mean, I know football is what we keep talking about, but the Big 12 has become a very real basketball conference in the future. I buy that. Obviously, there could be just a complete college athletics landscape, shake up, move, things going crazy, all that kind of stuff. New model, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure, but we don't know any details on that. Um, Obviously, FSU and Clemson could join another league. However, and this is what you're talking about, and I agree with you that timing has to have some reason and logic on where they want to go. Dellinger says, it's unlikely any SEC or Big Ten school will agree to accept a reduction in TV distribution to add a school, and ESPN is not completely made of money. They would have to bring in more than $100 million more a year to add one or both of those schools. That's a pretty sizable amount. Now, how much does ESPN save if they opt out in February? No idea. Yeah, Yeah. Because it might be apples for apples at that point. Maybe. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Um. Could they do something like SMU, Stanford, and Cal did where you take a smaller piece for a certain number of years just to get in? Is that a possibility? If I'm hand-raised guy in the room at Clemson, my answer to that is yes. However, one national source and one ACC administrator told Dellinger yesterday that people are talking about the wrong school, that the key to the ACC actually is North Carolina. Oh, wow. They're saying, the one, yeah, right. I've been saying that for years. They're actually the one with the most power of any of these schools that – Clemson and FSU have gotten this football buzz, but it's a UNC as an institution. Oh, allow me to tell you this emphatically. Yep. The SEC has wanted North Carolina for a decade. The Big Ten wants North Carolina. North Carolina has held on to this, well, what's it going to look like? And what about North Carolina State, the legislature? They have this love-hate relationship with Duke where they're paired, and it's this great basketball rivalry. There, there's, there's a fear of it dissipating if North Carolina is in the ACC in the SEC for example mm-hmm. is their basketball rivalry with Duke the same game that it is today sure and the answer is no stuff changes their rivalry with Kentucky though would be Huge. off the, off the page can you imagine ESPN when when ABC when Kentucky and North Carolina play basketball home and home it's much watch television Mm-hmm. And it would be two of the biggest brands going. So stuff changes, but the ACC is going to fall apart because I think what you're seeing, the fact that Ross is even writing about it tells me that ESPN is going to opt out. Yeah. Cause that's the first time it was that high in a story where it's okay. This is, this is where we're leading. Okay. Yeah. They'll opt out. They blow it up. Nobody has to pay these ridiculous exit fees, and people go where they want to go. And if I'm Louisville and teams like that, I, yes, I I go to the Big 12. The money's basically the same, and I survive. They're going to expand the basketball playoff. The Big 12 will get – because the Big 12 at that point will have, what, 18, 20 teams in it. They'll get 
12 bids in the league, in the tournament. And the and ESPN is involved in this in every way because they are the primary and sole rights holder of the ACC, the SEC, and the college football playoffs. Mm-hmm. So ESPN is going to get what it wants. Michael McCann, the uh, either current or former professor at Mississippi College who does stuff for Sportico, he offers a legal perspective on Clemson and the ACC, saying, quote, in the coming weeks, the ACC will answer the complaint and raise several defenses, except Expect the conference to insist that Clemson, like FSU and others, voluntarily entered into contractual agreements that contemplated a give and take. Uh, the ACC will further maintain and has lawfully interpreted and applied contractual agreements with member schools. Court, j- courts generally defer to membership organizations in their interpretation of rules so long as those interpretations are not arbitrary or capricious, a very deferential standard. The ACC might also maintain the lawsuit is not yet ripe. Unless and until Clemson moves to leave the conference, the ACC could argue the legal controversy is more hypothetical than actual and kick the can down the road. Caden Proctor just and texted me it. and said, hey, just do what you want to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Court smart. Okay. Wait, what's the? He says, you can always go back to the ACC. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Mark has a good question here, and I don't know the answer. It's, does this ever get to a point where football has its own conference? conferences and the other sports get back to some kind of regionality i don't think so but i don't I mean, maybe i don't know that i doubt it the sec to this point has not lost regionality no it's different but we haven't lost it no it's texas fine. and oklahoma had they been in the league in 1991 we wouldn't be going hey that's really a misfit that's not in the southeast i get oklahoma's not in the southeast well, but M- missouri's not in the southeast they're the worst one but we've all accepted they're a big Mis- 10 school but we've all accepted missouri at this point you're used to it it's fine accepted yeah but it's fine they're not going anywhere unless they go to the big 10 and i don't think they will they're happy making boatloads of money the point is it's fine texas and oklahoma aren't going to change the fabric of the sec they're only going to enhance it north carolina would enhance the league oh 100 percent. 100 percent. i mean it just would I don't know about Florida State. Regionality is important. I mean, everything I heard about Florida State was watch for the Big Ten. They really wanted to get into Florida. People are going to raise hell in the SEC with Florida State if it was a mention coming into this league. I agree. I mean, if I'm. That's why I don't think the SEC is the home of either one of these schools. I think it can be the home of North Carolina. I don't think it can be the home of Clemson or Florida State. The two that they've wanted forever Virginia, North North Carolina Carolina and Virginia. That's who they want. That's who they've wanted for. It's 12 years now. That's who they wanted. And at the time, those schools were like, well, the ACC is fine. Now, they, they, if you're hand-raised guy in the room, we've done this a million times, so I won't belabor the point, but we've finally gotten there. Where hand-raised guy got his voice. Mm-hmm. Hand-raised guy comes and goes, hey, this is stupid. We can't afford to take this pay cut like this. This is dumb. We've got to get out. Y'all can debate this all you want to, but we got to get out. And that's happening in North Carolina, too. Someone in their room is now going to say, okay, well, hey, we've got runway here. We're not even the bad guy now. We're just jumping. It's easy to follow, right? And Virginia goes, if you'll do it, we'll do it. Yeah, we're in. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, now you look at the clear financial differences. What's more important to North Carolina, that money or the Duke rivalry? Still play Duke. I mean, still play Duke, sure. Just doesn't have the same juice. Sure. You're not playing for the ACC regular season title. You think we can't learn to love Tennessee, North Carolina in basketball? Sign me up today. We'll be all right. I mean, how big of a deal would it be when North Carolina came to Oxford? It'd be a tough ticket. Virginia with its, I mean, all jokes aside, they're a good program. Yeah, sure. Virginia, Alabama. Okay, I'll watch it. North Carolina, Florida. Mm-hmm. We'll figure it out. People at Chapel Hill were big excited when Florida came to town. Tennessee came to town. Kentucky came. Oh, my God, the Kentucky game would be just off the charts. But, I mean, even some of the others, Arkansas, mm-hmm. LSU. These are big-name schools in, in college basketball. Texas. When Texas came to North Carolina, you don't think that would be a big game? Mm-hmm. 
your first four games tonight, speaking of basketball, at a 540 on True TV, you got number 16 seed Grambling State, number 16 seed Montana State, the last 16 seed up for grabs. Um, the Bobcats finished fifth in the big sky, but won the tournament, taking the bid from Eastern Washington. And then uh, your nightcap at 810, Colorado and Boise State fighting for a 10 seed at this point. Cody Williams. So Colorado State and Colorado were both in the first four games? Apparently so. Good chance to watch Cody Williams tonight. Why are they not why are they not calling one of the Jalen Williams like Jay or something else? Because they're both named Jalen. Well, okay, but Well, their mothers named them Jalen. Even inside the team? Inside the team. What do they do? The one from Arkansas, they call him Jay Will. Okay. And the one from um Santa Clara, they call him Dub. Oh, so neither one actually gets their. So neither one gets to be called. They change Jaylen both names inside the team. Because I guess that's better than changing one, and then it makes it look like, hey, he's better. Although I heard Chet him. Holmgren talking to both of them, and he referred to both of them as Jalen. Well, that's confusing. Eh, they figured it out. Forty-seven and twenty, it's working. This is. This feels like an easy. Fix. I desperately want them to draft Jalen Williams from Auburn. They're not. No, but I want them to so bad. Like a late second round pick. You think it would? You, th- you, th- you think Presty would avoid that just because of that reason? No, no, he's. I'm not taking a third Jalen Williams. He's an analytic nerd. If that Jalen Williams fits the analytic, that's he, fine. He would take him absolutely. Okay, fair enough. How cool would that be though? And Three his, of your whatever, and, and it would be two that are spelled exactly the same way. Because his is spelled like Arkansas Jalen Williams. Is it? Yeah. Oh, they're spelled differently. I didn't know that. Yeah, Jalen from Santa Clara is J-A-L-E-N, and Jalen from Arkansas is J-A-Y-L-I-N. Oh. So there is a difference. Okay. It's just not phonetic. Okay. Podcast brought to you in part by G&M Pharmacy, Tyson Drugs, Holly Springs, Oxford, those two locations. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they take care of MedSync, which fills your prescriptions the same day each month, takes care of you, one trip to the pharmacy, one delivery. You have everything you need when you need it with G and M. Again, that is 662-236-2222. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall, upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, a lot offered at Southern Traditions, including horseback riding offerings from beginner lessons to advanced to competing at nationally recognized competitions. It's uh, check them out on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. I'll have a mailbag to you uh, later today. It is brought to you by Art Hayes of Sotheby's International Realty. Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you as a licensed agent and a supporter of all things Ole Miss. Art can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world at no charge to you. Seriously. So call and ask Art how. 612-805-5929 612-805-5929 or email art at um it's arthur.hayes h-a-y-s at lakesmn.com podcast also brought to you by northeast spark that serves people across rural communities two packages the ignite the 100 mbps or the blaze it is your one gig option your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband it's any spark.com 662-238-3159 phone service is available Print controls, network security, a wireless mesh extender, those who need the extra help, and much more. So, again, that is indiespark.com or 662-238-3159. Kind of the uh, the AD version here of moving around, kind of like a player. Uh, Nebraska set to hire Washington AD uh, Troy Dannon as the Huskers' next AD. He took the job in Seattle in October after uh, serving eight years as the AD at Tulane. So... October to, to March here, moving from Washington to Nebraska. I started to make a political joke, but I didn't. Yes. Well, I mean, I do kind of wonder otherwise because... Cost of living? Probably more expensive in Seattle than it is Lincoln. Sure. What do you think of... And I can find the direct quote. What do you think of Shannon Terry's takes that ADs are the most underutilized and underpaid people in college athletics now because the players are getting what they're getting, the coaches are getting what they're getting, and the budgets are so high that if it was a corporate structure, oh, yeah. the ADs would be off the charts given where all the other money. He was talking about Greg Byrne, and his point was Byrne probably should making be making at least three, three and a half million dollars a year given what Alabama has put into its athletic department oh, all yeah. around him. Probably should. 
And Shannon's intimately familiar with Alabama. That's yes, his place. That's his place. So what's Burn make? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't have an answer to that. But clearly not that because that was where he Somebody's it's kind of crazy that a, and a, like what is te- technically your CEO is making like one percent of yeah. your yeah of your profit or your revenue. Sorry, should be making twenty something. Well, now yeah, now we're rolling. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, it is the whole structure is kind of crazy, but it's probably more for a Thursday show. We don't have a time to talk about. See where Dale was uh, saying that they are moving all work from home, and if you don't come back into an office, you have no ability to get promoted moving forward. Really? Mm-hmm. Saw that this morning. Well, you know, there are a lot of people that work from home that can't. If you're not a self starter, oh, it's it's completely personality based. Either you can or can't, depending on where it's your what you're doing. Like yeah. for me, working from home, the problem is that I I never stop working. Sometimes, but I, some people need to leave and yes. get sat in front of something. Like, it's it's easy for me. I come up here and go to work, but there are people that at home they can't work, and so no, they start folding laundry or a TV's on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because like, you're rec- you're you're reminded of everything you might have to do. Yeah around yeah there's there's some truth to that so but anyway just happened to uh happen to see that oh, i'm curious here what and, and i don't even mean from a basketball standpoint because i know it will interest you as a fan from a basketball standpoint from a business podcast standpoint this jj reddick lebron thing mm-hmm. are you interested well i mean i'm the wrong person to ask i know i said take the basketball yeah. out just simply oh Greatest of all time, somebody who is beloved, but also personality quirks. LeBron mm-hmm. has a lot of people across the spectrum and what they think of him as a human. JJ is very good at podcasting. Yes. I think he will be able to steer LeBron. He has transitioned into media flawlessly. Yes. I think he will be able to steer LeBron into a comfortable space where maybe LeBron lets his guard down a little bit and we okay. get to know him. Otherwise, it won't really work. No, because if it's corporate... But now they'll be able to get any guest on in the world. Literally. In the world. In the world of sports, they will be able to get any guest on. And maybe in the world of other things. Like they would be able to get Barack Obama on, for example. Yes. Um, their ability to open up and be human. Now, they picked a great teaser clip. Yes. Did you watch it? Yes. Phenomenal. They are literally sitting there with a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. And they are discussing how to guard a pick. Yeah. And it is like basketball dork, like just, but that's what podcasts are. They're niche. Give me that thing. Well, here's the thing about LeBron for his greatness. And he is great. I mean, I think you can make a legitimate argument that he's the greatest player ever. It's not the argument I would go with, but I think you can make the argument. He's also a very smart basketball person. Sure. I'm not talking about about his politics and all that crap on the court. His his ability to understand the game. Like if I was listening to an interview with Austin Reeves, plays for the Lakers. And Austin Reeves was talking about learning how to play with LeBron. And it was fascinating because LeBron knows every square inch of the court, where you're supposed to be in certain plays, pick the picker, all of those things. And he was saying that there are guys basically that don't know the game that intimately and that LeBron gets very frustrated with them part of you know having to play with greatness i think reddick can steer him in that direction where it will work reddick is really good and he's a very good interviewer yeah. and, and nba guys really like jj reddick like jj did an interview with kevin durant where he got durant into talking about things that kd typically doesn't talk about reddick's really good at it they all re- really respect him so i'm i'm I think it has a chance to be a great podcast. It's supposed so, to be about the actual game of basketball. Yeah. I mean, the, the quote here from Carter, it's like two wine masters, sommeliers talking about wine, not necessarily you or me arguing if I like Burgundy or Bordeaux better, talking about it's a, trying to be a complete 180 from a first take type of yeah. environment. But I'm, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm interested in that. Like if they, you know, if LeBron opens up about different players that he's played against, that he's played with. I mean, his career's, he's got to start thinking about the next step. He's approaching. And this might humanize him to really have a next step that's even bigger. I mean, yeah, he's approaching the, you know, Tiger's more human today than ever before. Yeah. Jordan never became a human. 
Not really. Not really, except through struggle a little the, bit. The last uh, dance. Yeah, that's fair. You got to really see what he was about. I thought his his eulogy at Kobe Bryant's funeral was oh, okay. incredibly humanizing Okay, about Jordan. It gave you a glimpse inside of, much like LeBron, that if you didn't want if you didn't want to be great the way that Jordan wanted to be great, he he just couldn't quite understand you. That's why he he that's why he even though Kobe was technically a threat, he had so much admiration for Kobe because Kobe wanted to be great as bad as he did. Had that just insane desire to be the best, mm-hmm. to outwork, to outwork, to outwork. I mean, there was a story on the Alabama rival side about Jalen Milrow, which, who apparently is that guy. I mean, he's at the at the building three thirty, four o'clock in the morning every morning, and some of the players were like, "Hey, we're gonna try for a while to beat him there." And then after a while, they're like, "Screw this, man! I'm I'm like I'm asleep till five. And you just you know you hear the stories about Kobe, yeah, and they're legendary. Guys would be like, "I don't I don't understand it." The one about Kobe at the with the the redeem team is the one that's fascinating. Those are the best players in the world. It's what totally changed changed LeBron James's career. They went out partying in Vegas. They come back and Kobe Bryant's in the hotel, full sweat. He's been working out all night. Goes, takes a shower, comes back down, meets the team for the mandatory breakfast, and then he's back on the floor. And they're like, "Whoa, this guy's different." And so all of a sudden, Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron and them, are, instead of going out, they're working out with Kobe in the gym, mm-hmm. in the weight room. On the floor. And they, yeah. they, they, that, that's, that's what it's going to take to be great like that. Totally change them. So I, I'm curious if Redick, who was not a great player, Redick was a great shooter, but he wasn't a great player. But Redick really understands basketball. Um. I'll I'll be curious to see whether Reddick can get LeBron to open up in that way. And still, or, I mean, obviously around the game because he's an analyst and all that stuff, but he only retired three years ago. I mean, still, as a player even, it's not that far in the mirror at all. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, no, J- it, it struck my interest yesterday. J.J. knows everybody, and for whatever reason, even all the young players really like J.J. Reddick. He, he has a ton of respect. Yeah. Guys really like him. All right, back tomorrow with uh, Jeffrey, CoverageRumbleGrove.com. We've got stuff on uh, multiple sports. The transfer portal is open for basketball. If there's actual news, we will uh, bring that to you. And then uh, have some more interviews and stuff coming tomorrow as well. So hope all of you have a wonderful day. Again, Ole Miss knocks off Southern Miss. They've got Tennessee this weekend. Caden Proctor headed back to Alabama. Spring football is underway and more. Have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow.